Hello, my name is John Hedengren, and I'll be talking about some resources for teaching process dynamics and control. In particular, a hands-on temperature control lab with an interface in Simulink and Python, MATLAB, and other interfaces. I have uh, co-authors on this as well. Uh, we have Abe Martin and uh, Jeff Cantor at Notre Dame, and then Nigel Ruel at Iowa State. So we're going to be presenting this at the American Institute of Chemical Engineers annual meeting in 2019 and Jeff will be presenting that with support from us. Giving, giving an overview of this talk, uh, we'll first of all start with a discussion on automation, why it's needed across industries, why it's so important at this time. There's a hands-on learning need with enrollment growth. Sometimes we get large classrooms and we need to make a small classroom experience. There's an industry message to universities. And then we have a, uh, the development of the pocket sized lab overview and I'll give some teaching resources with the learning objectives and then give some demos in Python and MATLAB, Simulink and Simtune and then discuss some of the uh, community resources and where we're going next with this lab. So why is automation needed? Well, there's a medical automation. Next time you get an operation, it might be done by a robot. There's people transportation and several companies that are trying to disrupt the market in terms of how we move around. Uh, product transportation as well. And automation is important in all of these. There's also the traditional industries like oil and gas or energy. Uh, but new topics within those industries, such as data science, analytics, machine learning, cybersecurity, and digitalization. So this is these are just some statistics from Notre Dame and the class size enrollment growth uh, by sophomore, junior, and senior. And you can see uh, a large growth. And one of the challenges is how do we give uh, a small classroom experience to these large classroom sizes. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, we've had you know, process control courses where you have uh, one or two large labs that sit maybe in a unit operations lab. Students schedule time to go in and use these, but the time is limited, especially as the enrollment size grows. Uh, so one of the challenges that we tried to address is how can we do things in the classroom? How can we do things in parallel? How can we do things that students can take home and use and really immerse into the experience uh, without having to have just a very short time window? So you can see also some of the class profiles. Uh, you know, in 2016, the class sizes were very large, 50 or more, and it's uh, improved a little bit since then, but compared to the rest of the university where most of the classes are fewer than 20 students, um, you know, students in engineering might be missing out on some of that uh, experience. Okay, so large over 50 right here and then it's improved uh, here. So what can we do to improve this experience, especially in a senior level or junior level course like process dynamics and control? Some of the key findings from industry, from this uh, industry academic alignment, about expectations about new graduates, uh, they've had a key finding here that new emphasis is particularly needed on topics such as process safety, applied statistics, and they have process dynamics in here, applied process control, a very hands-on practical experience versus uh, just a theoretical experience in the classroom, and through new teaching materials and effective integration into the curriculum. So this was published in 2015, and we saw this as a challenge, uh, myself and other collaborators. How can we take these large class sizes plus this challenge that's being brought forward by industry and develop something where we can have a step change influence on how process control is taught? So we developed the pocket size transient heat transfer lab, and especially Abe Martin, who had the original concept and idea, and then Jeff Cantor, Carl San, uh, Sandrock, 
and uh, others who really developed a software interface, uh, especially in Python, uh, but others as well, um, you know, that have developed different modules. So it's been this community effort to develop this not only from the hardware side, but also from the software side as well. So we have in this, uh, in this lab, we have uh, sensors, we have the actuators, and the controllers. Those are the three elements that are needed for any feedback control system. And we selected thermistors and connected those to these pins here on the Arduino, an 8-bit microcontroller which has a 10-bit um, analog to digital converter and then we also have an LED and then uh, connecting two heaters right here. These are power transistors and uh, we were originally going to put um, a resistor in series with these but we noticed that the heaters just got hot themselves so we double the switching mechanism for pulse width modulation uh, with the heating capacity of those and just simplified the design. So we have these two actuators uh, that we place in close proximity to the sensors and then we also have a heat sink just for heat removal. These thermistors can go between negative 40 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. And then we have an indicator here with this LED as well. And we put these two next to each other so that we have a either a CISO, a single input, single output system. Oops, that went forward just a little bit forward. Uh, more. Okay, so we have a CISO system or if you look at the two we have a potential disturbance um, or we have a MIMO system overall where we have two actuators and two sensors where there's some amount of um, communication between them in terms of the heat transfer. So here's uh, in terms of lab development. Uh, Abe Martin really led this development in breadboarding the lab and then uh, advancing it to PCB printing and assembly. So the first prototypes back in 2014, uh, we had a student's attempt to build the labs, and there were many mistakes and many melted parts, so it didn't go too well. Um, about half of the class had reported a bad experience because uh, the hardware just wasn't working. They wanted to get to the software to the, the uh, test the theory, but um, unfortunately a lot of the labs didn't work when we let uh, students build them, even with good instructions. So to change that, we built an extensive uh, frequently asked questions online with installation and troubleshooting. We built and verified 10 labs that were PCB uh, printed, but we did the assembly. Um, and then also the next iteration was this MIMO lab going from the single input, single output to the multiple input, multiple output and then mass producing these. Now that uh, 3,000 have been produced and distributed, uh, we've seen adoption at 40 universities and then about um, 800 uh, individuals that have also gotten these as well. So the dissemination has been very good. You can see um, you know, the manufacturing, the quality assurance is uh, much better now. So let's talk about how we teach process control and how this might fit within the curriculum. So a survey was done in 2015 on how we teach process control and the survey is repeated uh, about every five years I believe just to see how we're doing. Uh, so we have uh, Microsoft Excel, MathWorks, and then uh, you know Simulink and MATLAB. And so we knew that these were going to be important to interfaces to develop with the temperature control lab. And then we also wanted to introduce something new, which is Python. Could we use Python for process control and develop uh, that as uh, an additional thing uh, above and beyond what MathWorks provides and Excel provides in terms of tools to be able to teach and, uh, and really uh, make the theory come alive? 
Here's some of the topics that are commonly taught. Uh, these are less commonly taught, and these are more commonly taught. These are um, you know, a fraction of the respondents. And you can see that uh, a very common thing that's taught in the classes are feedback controller design and tuning and PID controllers. And then we have a lot of uh, Laplace. Okay, and then we also have uh, you know feed forward controller design. Um, you know we have instrumentation, and oh I went forward another one, uh, and others there. Okay, so these are the topics that we also need to address. We knew the software that people use, also the topics that were important to be able to reinforce with a hands-on lab. This is a, f a flow sheet of some of the topics and learning modules for instructors. These are uh, this is the dynamic section. So this top part right here, this is the modeling or the dynamics. And then down below are the controller sections. So we start with controller design, uh, selecting the actuator and the measurement. Uh, we look at uh, situations where if we have data, then we continue on to step tests, or we do double it, uh, look at collected data, PRBS, uh, pseudo-random binary signal, uh, or we have, if we don't have data, we also develop a physics-based model and then linearize, and then come up with this first order plus dead time model. If we do the graphical fit, we can do a first order, or we can do a second order, or if we have some of this other type of data sequence, we use regression, and if we want to go lower order, we can get back to one of these. Or if we want to continue down this way uh, with linear regression, we can do time series, state space, or physics based, empirical that lead to model predictive control. But those are the topic of another class. We typically favor the more, uh, the more basic topics, uh, sticking with first order and second order plus um, you know PID controllers in this class. Okay, and then here are the here are the controllers sections. So once we have our first order plus dead time model, we see if there's a measured disturbance. If there is, then we design a feed forward or cascade control. If there's not, then we just uh, look at see if there's an in, if it's an integrating system. If it is, we design a P-only controller. For this lab, it's not an integrating system, so we use a PI or PID controller. We then do stability analysis, use ITAE or IMC tuning correlations to get good first uh, PID parameters, and then look at control performance. We set up some control performance metrics, and if it's unacceptable, we iterate and adjust those tuning parameters until it's acceptable. So this is the flow chart of what we work with, and we've developed these learning modules along the way for each of these steps and how it fits into the overall uh, picture. So here are lab exercises one to four. We first of all start with step tests. We then do physics-based model, convective, and radiative heat transfer and then go on to linearization and others. I want to just show you one of the lab uh, modules here. So if you, I'm going to go to this link and then just bring up um, this. This is, for example, a Google Colab sheet. And I'm running this just through a browser. And we teach basic things like uh, building loops, plots, and regressions, interpolating, solve equations, uh, determine thermal conductivity. And then this learning uh, exercise where we go through a radiative, convective, and conductive heat transfer, and then how we model those. So a number of questions. It's a self-paced learning exercise for students. And they eventually come down to uh, some code. And they will modify this code. There's some things that they have to fill in and then they can run it right through the web browser. Okay, and it produces a plot. Now this is in Python right here, uh, but it's just available through this uh, link. So this is an example of one of the learning modules, and then we're just gonna continue running some of these to get uh, 
you know the different data and answer some of these questions that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to work on okay so we're going to okay I'm just going to do 12 divided by a thousand here fill that in and then run this so there's just certain things they need to fill in and then they look at the effect of convection and thermal radiation and when uh, those become important as you raise the temperature okay so there's one of the learning modules I'll introduce you to a, a number of other ones as well okay so we have uh, 5 through 10 here we do some empirical regression um, there is controller design so we're beyond the modeling now we're into controllers uh, in that lower half of the sheet and then we do P only control we notice that there's offset uh, and be able to calculate how much then we move on to PI control PID control and then we tune we go through some tuning exercises in this iteration loop to be able to tune a PI or a PID controller we add feed forward control and see how much better we can get uh, then we do a deep dive into the controller actuator and sensors and how those actually work in terms of uh, pulse width modulation of the transistor or sensors, how those signals are converted from voltages into a degree Celsius. And then we go on with imp impulse response and we'll have others as well. So here's a MATLAB interface and a Python interface, just some of the code, just to show how to be able to read the temperature and be able to control uh, the transistor. So we have first of all the flash in the LED and um, okay so we have displaying the LED we turn it on in MATLAB uh, we just set a 1 and for the heaters we have heater 1 set to 50 percent we pause for a little bit and then we turn it off and then we also want to display the temperatures displaying temperature 1 and temperature 2 and this would be heater one and heater two and then our LED uh, right here that we can control from MATLAB or from Python so Python side is just uh, importing this lab and then uh, setting the LED to 100% the, this Q1 uh, that's to 50% here's Q2 to 50% and then if we want to read the temperatures uh, for temperature one or temperature two uh, we can do that uh, with these commands. Okay, so there is MATLAB and Python. Uh, you can also run Python in MATLAB now, so uh, the lines between these two are starting to blur. There's also a Simulink interface, and I just wanted to show this uh, with a demo, you know, building this interface. Students can just start from scratch and build this, be able to um, take the measurements and be able to construct their Simulink diagram. I'm going to go ahead and just open that and let's just run through uh, Simulink here. I'm going to go ahead and just um, okay adjust my heaters with some sliders. All right, I'm going to put these sliders in, connect these, and then have a scope. And then let's go into uh, into the this internal block and just see how things are are done we're gonna write the heater value and then we're gonna limit it to zero to a hundred percent now we can go up to 2.55 because it goes from zero to 255 so uh, 2.55 is a maximum we can have on that gain I like to do it a little bit less just to have lower temperatures there okay then we want to read and this is from the Simulink interface um, to the Arduinos, the add-on package. And we'll have a gain. This converts the integer T1 value into a temperature. So we have the voltage reading. And then we're going to convert that into a temperature. And then it's going to be coming out on our block. All right, now we do the same thing for heater 2. We write... Uh, the heater 2, we read temperature 2, and then we just set up the same thing. I like to make this second gain 1, and that just makes um, 
some of the exercise is more interesting because these two will have different gains by a factor of two. Okay, we're going to read the temperature. This is going to be exactly the same as the one above it. Okay, and then I'm going to put in something to also um, show the, uh, this is going to show the, an indicator of how hot it is. So I'm going to control the LED. All right, let me go ahead and zoom out here a little bit just so I can show this. Okay, so I'm going to have the LED on or LED blink. All right, so if it's greater than a certain amount, um, then I am going to uh, have the LED on, otherwise it's just going to be blinking. All right, let me go ahead and save this. And then let's go back to the, the Simulink interface here. And I'm just going to, um, I've got an Arduino here that I'm gonna connect up with the USB. Okay, let me just connect the USB and the power cable. Okay, so that is plugged in. And then um, I'm going to just go ahead and run this. Uh, I'll run it for 300 seconds. And I'll show some of the uh, manual control that we can use uh, to get step test data. All right, now if this is not working for you, I can show you as well some of the things that you have to do to uh, connect and troubleshoot this. But let's just look uh, right now at the scope and see what's going on with this. Um, all right. All right, so here are my temperatures. And let me turn on heater one. I can either use the slider here and just turn it on. I'll turn it on to 100%. So I'm going to do a step test on this and then bring back my uh, scope. And then let me just adjust uh, this value. You can see the temperature is going to start going up. Okay, so I'm going to give it just a little bit just as it starts to heat up uh, from the heater one. We'll also see heater two start to heat up as well. All right, so I'm just readjusting this uh, Y scale. You could also set this uh, so you don't have to have them readjust it. Or the first time you run it, it'll get it about to the right uh, range. And then you don't have to readjust it for subsequent uh, cycles. Okay, so here it goes. It's going up in the temperature. We turned on the heater right here at about 20 uh, 30 seconds. You could also add that to your plot as well. All right, and uh, so this is getting hot. And let's say I wanted to do a step down now. I'll do a, just an impulse response. All right, and then we should see this. Uh, you can see some of the dynamics. You can see some of the MIMO interactions here for temperature two. Even though I only heated up temperature one, you can see an increase here in temperature two. You can see some of the random variation in the data, some of the discrete levels uh, because we have a 10-bit uh, analog to digital converter with the Arduino. You can see some of the discrete levels, you know, about a half a degree or so. Uh, temperatures that make this very realistic in terms of, you know, collecting data every second and then uh, just some random variation or noise. Okay, so once we have this data, we could do uh, fitting of something like in a first order plus dead time model or other types of uh, models, second order, for example, and then get a PID, uh, PID tuning. So let me add a PID controller here. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> delete this second one. Let me stop this first. All right uh, here, I could have a disturbance here with heater two, uh, but this one is now going to be a set point. Okay, so this is going to be uh, T1, T1 set point. And then I'm going to move this, <clears throat> move it over a little bit. All right, and let me break this connection. And break this, add, I'm gonna add uh, some signals here, number of import, in, input ports, I'm gonna make that three. And then I'm gonna just change this to the third one here. Uh, let me go to my library and just add a couple things to this. 
I'm going to need a PID controller. All right, I'll add that. And then I'm also going to need, in addition, a summation. All right, to sum. And I'll add that as well. Okay, and then I want um, a plus and a minus. I'm going to have feedback control. And I'm going to add my PID controller right here. All right, and then I'll take my temperature and feed that back into the negative terminal here. And then let's plot our set point. I'll put that here. And this is going to be automatic control now. And then finally, I would like to see what heater values I'm getting. All right, and let me move this around just a little bit so they're not uh, crossing over. All right, now we're ready for automatic control. I can go into PID controller and just put in some of the output saturation. We know we can't go above 100, and we know we can't go below zero. Okay, we can have an anti-windup method or anti-reset windup, and I'll just put a back calculation. All right, there we go. We have a controller, and I'll click Apply. Oh, I need to change my tuning parameters. I'm just going to do 10, and then let's do 10 divided by 80 here. And you'll get some of those just from the tuning correlations. All right, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just run this. And um, this is going to now try to control to a set point instead of doing manual control. So I've converted this over to PID. You can see that a student could easily do this, add the different blocks, uh, be able to do different configurations, even a feed forward here as well. So let me open up this scope. All right, so here you can see uh, the temperature is still at zero for the set point. Let's go ahead and just turn on the set point to a value that we'd like, maybe something like 50. And then if I come back here, I'll see that the controller is now starting to act. You can see the heater just went on to 100%, and then you're going to see this PV start to rise, try to meet the set point right here. Okay, I'll let this go for just a little bit. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the recording, just let it go for a bit, and then uh, and then we'll come back to it in just a second. Okay, you can see that it's now approaching the set point. Uh, you can see the heater value is fluctuating a little bit. That's just some due to some of the measurement noise, that half a degree fluctuation uh, just from the real control signal. Uh, now, if you don't like the tuning, you can you know, change that on the fly here. You could come in back to the PID block, and while this is running, you, know, you might change it up to a gain of 15 on the controller instead of uh, the 10, and then apply that. And then as this is running, uh, the students will be able to see the effect of their control changes, and the, uh, the heater output in response to those control changes. And so they could quantify things like rise time, overshoot, ratio, uh, decay ratio, and other things that you typically do for control performance monitoring, and then come up with some of their best uh, PID tuning parameters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here just because there's some other demos that I'd like to show as well. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and stop this. All right, so that's closed loop control with, uh, with MATLAB. And you can do manual control. You have automatic control. There's another uh, software which is called SimTune. And this is commercially available software. Uh, and it has more of the industrial implementations like Honeywell Equation B. You saw those. Uh, there's also Allen Bradley controllers with a detailed explanation, and it has an interface also to the temperature control lab. With, uh, it doesn't require programming, so this is an option if you don't want to use Python or MATLAB, maybe something like Excel. And it has some very nice features for building models, 
It's all graphically driven. And it's probably a little, lot more similar to what you would find in industry in terms of the interface. Uh, both going from automatic to manual control and some of the other uh, you know, industrially relevant controller types. Okay, so we also have some advanced control modules as well, uh, not just the regulatory basic controls. You know, conventional feedback control is like driving while looking in reverse. That's uh, feedback control. You're looking at the air in your measurement. You might have some feed forward in there as well, but anytime you get into nonlinear multivariate systems, uh, model predictive control can become competitive because you're looking forward with those same models that you're using to tune the PID controllers or, or even more advanced models than that. So this is an example of model predictive control. This is a Python or Ma there's a MATLAB interface to it as well. You can see multivariate control where it considers the effect of both of them and then adjusts the heater values. You can also see that it's looking forward. You can see uh, it, it has a move plan and if you rewind a little bit you can see that it actually made that move plan. So this is the projected forward and this is what happened uh, before. Alright, and then combining that even with some other ones with, uh, you know, we've talked about machine learning or in this case it's moving horizon estimation. It's learning the model as you go and so you don't train the model beforehand in offline sequence. You learn it as you go and then apply that in a model predictive controller. So going back to some of these uh, overview of these community resources that are developed, there are 22 process control PID modules, and those cover everything from physics-based modeling to empirical modeling, uh, parameter regression, PID control and tuning. We're trying to make this lab so that an instructor can adopt it and have all of the learning modules that are there both in Python and in MATLAB or others like SimTune where you might uh, just want to use a commercial interface. There's the Advanced Control Lab. Uh, this is in Python and MATLAB. There are eight modules for that. They cover things like machine learning, moving horizon estimation, and model predictive control. So just as a summary, here's the link uh, for a lot of these modules. Um, and uh, the Temperature Control Lab is now available on Amazon as well, uh, which helps with the distribution. And I'll just show this. Okay, so here's the, uh, the Amazon page. And, but what we really want to motivate from instructors is adding to the community resources. It's not necessarily the hardware that's important. It's the, the learning modules, the software, the immersive experience for the students. And so some professors have volunteered to do language translation uh, into uh, translating the modules for uh, you know, foreign language implementation. There's also modeling and control modules, additional ones that I haven't covered here. I certainly love to get um, your ideas, but also your support in developing some of these. We also have some new microcontroller labs under development. You know, the Temperature Control Lab has been very popular. It's very robust. Um, and, but there are other opportunities as well to have these hands-on take-home labs. Uh, we've had excellent participation already from 40 plus universities with some of them that are the key individuals at these universities uh, BYU, Notre Dame, Iowa State, Villanova and University of Pretoria in South Africa. Okay so we have uh, and I'll just end it here in the webinar with any questions and discussion I'll just uh, go ahead and stop the recording now.